What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over how to merge two sorted linked lists. So let's say we have this linked list of 137 and it's null. And then we have a uh, linked list B, which is 1, 2, and then null. So we want to merge these two so that it becomes sorted, right? So we know the first two linked lists are sorted. And we want to return the final linked list where they're all sorted in sorted order. So imagine you just add, like have all these numbers this would be 1, 1, 2, 3, and then 7. And all these values are just going to be sorted. So we have basically we have the same same numbers in both of the lists, but now they're all sorted, right? Okay. So that's basically what we want to return. So we have the same numbers 1, 3, 7, 1, 2, but now they're all in sorted order and it's in one giant list. So yeah. All right, I'm going to go over how to do this problem because uh, I feel like there's not much other to explain okay so first of all let, let's see let's say we got as a uh i'm gonna do it recursively by the way so let's say we have one three and seven and this goes to null and then the second one we have one two and a null whoops and this goes to null Okay, so let's say we had like, okay, let's say we had, let's, so since we're doing this recursively, we have to think about the base cases. So let's say we're at the end of the list. So where both lists are at the end, right? For both of these, like we're trying to merge them all together, right? So in our final list, if both of these are null, right? If both of these these two uh, nodes from the first list and the second list, if they're both null, then we should add a null, right? Do you guys understand what I mean? Like if if we compare this to this, it's gonna be null. Our final list has to have a null. The reason why is because like, well, they're both null, so our final list has to have a null, right? So if, if, the, if any of the nodes that we're going looking through are null, then uh, our final list has to point to a null. Okay, it has to return null. Likewise, if um, now let's say that we're comparing null with like two, right? So if we're gonna insert all these values to the final list of like one, one, two, three, seven, null, um, if we're comparing a null with like just about regular value two, we need to return whichever that's not null. Right, so if, um, if I'm at like this point and this part is null, right? Uh, if I wanna add my value to the end linked list, then this, whatever I'm returning, I it has to not be null, right? Like um, let's say we had a one, one, two, three, seven, right? So we have this list and this list. If I'm gonna insert, uh, let's say we already inserted like all the other values, like one, one, and then uh, this is not a good example, but anyway, if, if we're at this point where we have two and then null in at, at this location, then we have to add whichever value that's not null, right? We have to add two here and then go to the next one, to the next node that we're adding. You guys understand what I'm saying, right? It's because like if, um, if you reach to a null, that means that you're at the end of the list for one of the lists, right? So you have to continue on the other list. Do you know what I mean? So like if, um, so let's say I reach the end of the list of this list of null, my other, other node is still looking at the other list because it's, they're not the same size, right? Then I have to add whichever value that's not null, right? I have to add like seven here or something, right? So that's what depends on the link list. So those are the two, uh, those are the three base cases. So the three base cases are If they're both null, so if, if the first node that I'm looking at is null and the second one is null, then I have to return null. And that's the case when both of these are like at the end, right? At the end, then I have to add a null in my, uh, I have to add an end to my last link list that I'm returning, right? I have to add a null because they're both null. Um, if one of them is null, 
So if one of them one of them is null, if the second list head is null, but the first one's not, then I have to return the first one because that's the that's just uh, continuing on the rest of the first list, right? And uh, if the first one is null and the second one is not null, then I have to return the second one. And the reason why is because this is just adding whichever list that uh, whichever node is not null, right? If we're if one if we reach reach one part of that's null, that means we're finished with one of the lists, and the other list we still need to continue adding those values in. So that's why for those values we have to we just have to return that other node, right? Whichever node that's not null. So heads two is not null, then we would return head two, right? All right, this part is where it gets a little tricky to understand, but uh, I guess you have to bear with me. So we have head one, and uh, so we already went through the, ba the base cases, right? So let's actually go over, go through an example test case of the current test case, and then we'll see how this actually affects anything. So if we look at the first test case of uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 7, null, and then 1, 2, null, we have, let's go through the first if statement. So if the head of the linked list data is less than or equal to head 2 of the data, I'm going to recursively call on the next list and set my head 1's next to point to that. So what does this mean? This means that so let's say, let's say this is our this is our head right. This is our head one. Head this is head one, and this is head two. Let's call it H two, okay? H two and H one, okay? So let's say H one is less than or equal to H two. Right, so in this case, it is, right, 1, 1. So what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this pointer of 1's next, right, this point of 1's next, is going to point to recursively calling the rest of the list, passing in these values. Right, so this head 1, this head 1's next, this 1 is going to point to the rest of the list passing in the next of the value, right? Merging in the, the rest of the list of that value. So then it would be one point to whatever that is merged with uh, three, seven, null and one, two, null, right? Whichever is returned to this part, right? Because what it's doing is that it's going to merge the rest of the list of head one with head two's list so that you could return your final merge list together. So that's what this is doing, right? If our current data is less than or equal to seconds data, so if this one is equal to one or it's less than it, then we're just gonna recursively call on the rest of the list and pass it in. All right, let's say it was greater than it though. So let's say the current value is greater than the current data. And that scenario would happen if uh, when we traverse through the Second point, so let's say, uh, let's say we already merged one, one together. So one point to one. So these are already merged, right? Uh, so let's actually get rid of this. They're already merged together. Now um, we're at three and two. So in this situation, three's data is greater than two's data, right? Three's data is greater than two's data. So what is it gonna do, right? Okay, so what's gonna do is it's gonna set a pointer temporary to point to the second node. So this is the second node, right? This is the second node, uh, head two. So it's gonna set a temporary node to point to this, right? This is a secondary node point to this. Then it's going to set head two's next point, go to the next node. So this two is gonna go to the next one. So this is gonna be, H two is gonna go to the next node. Right, so now this is technically gone now, or this link is gone technically. So H2 is now goes to points to the next node, which is null, and temp points to two. Okay, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna set temp two's uh, temps next. This two is going to point to 
head one. So this two is going to point to now head one, which is three. So two is next is going to point to three. And then it's going to set head one to equal to temp. So our new head that we're going to get now is going to point to this. This is going to be our new head, right? Do you guys see why? Because it's going to now have two, then they'll go to three, then go to seven, right? Before it wasn't merged. Now it's merged. Now what it's going to set is it's going to recursively call on head ones next on the rest of the list. So it's going to be head ones is a eight is h two is a is two, and it's going to recursively call on the next of the list of this. So yeah, so the two is going to next is going to point to recursively calling on the rest of the list of this. So in the end, we return head one, which is going to be. Uh, after recursively calls, multiple recursive calls, it's going to be this one. It's going to be head one. And then we're going to return this new head. So yeah, I hope I hope I explained it properly. Um, it's a little bit hard to wrap, but basically what we're doing is we're just changing the links of each of the nodes so that we're actually merging the rest of them. So when you recursively call on the rest of the list, we're merging the rest of the nodes with what we previously stated. So yeah, so yeah, create a temporary point to head two. We're gonna go to the next node, and then we're gonna just point uh, two's next is gonna uh, uh, temporary next is gonna point to h one. Set h one to temp, and at h one equals to the next node. Point to the next node. So yeah, and then at the at the end we just return h head one, h one, which is uh this one here. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if I explain this properly. If not, I'll, I'll try, try to explain it again. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of this problem. Peace.